What? The Black Mamba, Kobe Bryant, was at our annual convention in Vegas at the Mirage, and boy, was he dropping bombs. In this video, I'm gonna share with you 10 things I learned about Kobe winning championships, Kobe's work ethic, Kobe sizing up competition as it relates to our multi-million dollar aspirations coming in right now. Yes, we had Kobe Bryant at our annual convention commemorating our 10 year anniversary as a company. Last year, we had Kevin Hart. In addition to that, we also had this year President George Bush, but that's for another video. So before we get started, make sure if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our YouTube channel as we journey on our way to 10,000 subscribers. And by the time we get there, listen, I want to give away a free pair of customized Jordans with a seven figure squad logo in your size. I'm gonna give you details at the end of this video, how to get your pair and win one. Number one, Kobe Bryant was a big thinker. He just didn't want to win one championship, he wanted to win multiples. Why? Because that's what you're supposed to do. Check out this clip. Multiple ones. And to be able to sit at the same lunch table with my muses, Michael, Magic, I want to be able to sit down at the same table with them and belong there. And uh, I'm very proud to be able to say I can do that. Number two, Kobe. <laughs> Jordan, Jordan Rain, Jordan, Jordan Rain. Here you go. Okay, good, 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 good. Oh, I'm sorry. Point number two, Kobe played and improved his weaknesses. Now, Kobe understood what he wanted even at 13 years old. So he realized that there was many areas of his game that was very, very weak. And he shored up those weaknesses. And what happened is that he had a progression over a period of time that he was a totally different player at 17 years old versus 13. And he realized compared to his peers, they're virtually the same player at 13 all the way to 17. And he says, now they got a problem because he was a well-rounded player and they weren't. And a lot of attention was on Kobe. He was, I think, ranked number 34, 35 in the country. And he worked his way up to become number one. How? By improving and showing up and playing towards his weaknesses. Number three, Kobe studied the greats. He was tipped off about a center, a media center in New Jersey, where he can pick out any player in any game and the touches he had in that game and watch video on them. And that led him to the conversation with Michael Jordan when he was 18 years old, the first time he played him, because one of the first things he asked Michael Jordan, how do you do your turnaround jump shot? And I think that's why a lot of times people make a comparison between Kobe and Michael, because Kobe really modeled Michael and his approach to the game as well as many other greats. Point number four, he respected, but was not intimidated by big names. Now, Kobe had the opportunity in high school to shoot around and get to know the Philadelphia 76ers. A lot of NBA players related to Michael Jordan as Black Jesus, like you don't want to go strong against him. He's like, what? He's just a guy. He's not Black Jesus. He's Mike. He's a player just like me. And the level of maturity he had at 18 years old to look at another player, respecting them, but not being intimidated by them. And if you look at business the same way, that you're not intimidated by the big names, you respect them, but you want to fight, you want to compete, you want to get better. Why? Because they're in a position you want to get to as well. And it's only a matter of time before you do. The fifth thing I learned, Kobe played for championships, not financial security. I remember Patrick asking Kobe, how did you size players up? Was it harder to size players up at the NBA level because everybody's talented? Or was it easy to size people up when you're in high school or even looking at the collegiate players? He says it's easier to size players up at the NBA level because everybody was playing for financial security. He's like, these guys were kind of, you know, in league, but not really committed to winning championships. They just wanted a paycheck. And that's where Kobe separated himself from a lot of folks because he wasn't there just to collect the page because that's already part of the territory. You made it to the league, you're getting paid. But Kobe 
wanted to win championships. That was important to him. He wanted to make sure everybody around him prioritized winning championships as a way of doing business on the Lakers. Point number six, hold people around you accountable. And he would even go on to say, listen, Shaq, our biggest area of conflict is because you don't work hard, you don't stay in shape. And had you stayed in shape, we would have won 12 championships. By far, you have been the GOAT because you're the biggest, nastiest, monster type of player I've ever seen or has been in the league. You would have been the GOAT. Easy, if you would have stayed in shape. Crazy, huh? The most talented, naturally gifted people aren't usually the ones that win championships. I mean, think about this. How many times do people give up on the goals and dreams just to be comfortable because they don't want to stretch themselves to the next level? Just because they want to take that faith step to discover that next best version of them versus them just wanting to protect their ego or protect their fear of failure. Whereas that step in faith, that challenging of themselves to get to the next level might mean success, might mean another breakthrough, another level that they would never reached. Number seven, Kobe looks for other obsessors. You know, before Kobe went on stage, I had a quick conversation with him backstage. Obsessors, he says, you can what? Obsessors only. I cannot relate to people that are not obsessive. He said, obsessors. He says, how can you tell obsessors? He goes, not only can I see it in their body of work, but dude, I can smell it on them. I can smell if somebody is obsessed with their work, their craft, their profession, their deal. I can tell those obsessors. I relate with them, I do business with them, and I run with those type of guys. Obsessors, are you an obsessor? Are you obsessed about everything, about you joining the Seven Figure Squad? Are you obsessed? Number eight, didn't take vacations just because. You know, Patrick asked him a question about who he hung out with and who he vacationed with, and Kobe said, you know, listen, I've never been the type of player that just goes out, hangs out with other players, and go on vacations just because. If he went on a vacation, it was because it was a business vacation. If it was the travel, it's because there's some purpose to improve his skills, some camp, some, some training event. It was always a purpose behind it. It wasn't just because. And here's why. He said, you know what? When I'm finally retired and I went through this window of my playing career, my playing opportunity to maximize my time on this platform, I don't want to look back from my chair of retirement to look back on my playing career and say, you know what? I regret this. I regret wasting time here. I regret wasting time there. And he was wise enough not to have that in his retirement years. I'm, this guy was thinking way, way ahead about what that life would look like, and he just didn't want any regret. Now, if you want to know what to align for, what to plan for, watch this video right here. It's called my Life Plan 20 by 4 on how to anticipate things that come up in your life to make sure you avoid big mistakes, so therefore you can maximize this prime time of your life to make sure you join the Seven Figure Squad. The ninth thing I learned from Kobe is he anticipated family responsibilities. Being a married man, having kids, and of course you have a busy schedule. You got weddings, anniversaries, you got birthdays, you got holidays. So when the season came out, he, he circled the dates that he'd be away from home and he knew to plan travel accordingly. So if he was playing out of town, but he needed to be back for a birthday or a family get together or a holiday, he'd fly right back and literally that same day or the next day, he'd fly right back where he needed to play to be there for his NBA commitment but it's not like he missed out. So there was work-life integration, there was planning ahead. So therefore, if you're looking to say, Matt, how do I put this all together? Anticipate your schedule, look forward and have your calendar be your friend because you can, you can have it all, but you gotta anticipate those type of things. You just can't be reactive to your life, or reactive to your schedule. You get further ahead if you plan accordingly. So therefore, you're more confident when you go through those type of situations and avoid a lot of conflicts and definitely avoid a lot of arguments. 10th thing I learned is he recruited you to be the best. Like he wanted you to be a part of Lakers if you wanted to be the best. If you don't want to be the best, there's other teams. Oftentimes people say, man, can I really make six figures? Can I really make seven figures? Can I be part of that seven figure squad? The bottom line is yes, you can. But the question is, are you willing to be the best version of you? Are you willing to demand to discover that person? Are you willing to go through the process? Us guys think it's too painful. Well, I think it's too painful to stay where you're at because two things, it's either you're growing or you're dying. See, Kobe wanted to make sure, even at 13 years old, he realized, I need to be better. I need to be better at my craft year after year after year after year. And if you're part of his team, he, would want, he wanted you to be the best. He wanted to look to his 11th years right, knowing that you wanted to be the best. You might be the most talented person on the team, but you're fighting like a dog to be the best. Kobe knew he wasn't the strongest. Kobe knew he wasn't the fastest. Kobe knew he wasn't the quickest. He knew he didn't have the highest vertical leap. But here's what he did know. He was willing to outwork you. He has been documented and known, and everybody around the league knows how hard Kobe works and how he treated his body to make sure he's prepared for the demands of the game. But here's a counter thought. Imagine if he didn't. Imagine if he didn't want to work hard. Where would his legacy be? Where would the Lakers franchise be? What happens if Kobe wanted to get soft? Translate that to your business, to your life, the way you make money. 
Imagine if you get soft. Imagine you ease up off the gas. Imagine that once you have momentum around your arms, that you let momentum go. See, Kobe never let that happen. I hope you consider these points from one of the greatest ever to play the game of basketball and how it can apply towards your life and you joining the Seven Figure Squad yourself. I'd love to know your thoughts. I'd love to know your feedback. Please drop them in the comments section below. So please subscribe to this channel. And once we have 10,000 subs, I'm gonna be giving away a pair of custom J's to a random subscriber who's been dropping comments on my videos from here on out at that time. Thanks for watching and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.